Amen. Give the Lord a shout, a clap, and a small, a small Vivaldi type of dance, and then you may take your seats. 25 steps to 10,000 micro churches. Our theme and vision is 10,000 micro churches. A micro church has 30 members, and a mega church has 70 members, and a miracle church has more than 70 members. Amen. So anything from 2 or 3 to 30. Is a micro church, and most of you here are going to be pastors of these micro churches. Some of you are going to be blessed by the Lord to oversee more than a hundred churches. Those people are going to be called centurion overseers or centurion pastors. Somebody who looks after hundred, not hundred people, but hundred churches. Many of you are going to cut the anointing through the makane. Some of you are going to be listening to the makane when you'll be transported into the third heavens. You will hear inexpressible words which are not permitted to be spoken. God will fill your heart with a certain oil. That oil will affect everything that you say and everything that you do. People will respond to you because of the ointment and the unction that the Lord has put in you people will listen to you because God has decided that people should listen to you God will change you from a sinner and a disgraceful person into a holy man of God you will become one of the watchers and one of the seers of the house of the Lord for your eyes will see beyond and further you will see into the distant future you will predict and it will happen you will say and it will come to pass your words will not be disregarded anymore because God will touch your lips your lips of clay and he will bless you hallelujah be blessed 10,000 times more in the name of Jesus can I say something about your future can I say something about your future Though thy beginning was small Although thy beginning was small Thy latter end Should greatly increase There will be no comparison Between your end And your beginning Receive it one Receive it two Receive it three Receive it four Nobody will believe you when you tell them about your beginnings so begin to take photographs now receive the anointing to take photographs of today so that you can show us evidence of the future Mike Murdoch Mike Murdoch advises all ministers to have a camera and a somebody who to take pictures all the time because often you don't believe if I show you my Tuesday Bible study at Kolebu you will not believe that that Tuesday Bible study will grow into a hall like this full every Tuesday so can I say something else about your future The God of your fathers shall make you a thousand times so many more as you are and bless you as he hath promised you. Many years ago, many years ago, I went to London. At that time, I think Pastor Richard and Pastor Joel were there and we had began our church when I got there Pastor Richard was working at a factory so they asked me to take a train to go to come to town
But today, by the grace of God, God has blessed us a thousand times more. Not only in London, but almost every country is affected so that there is almost no country that I can go for a holiday and not meet happy faces which want to wait, welcome me to that place. My problem is that I have to tell my secretaries to tell them that please, they shouldn't come to the airport. Sometimes when you travel for a long time, you look mulliganous and very exhausted when you come out. Now here are all these excited people coming to greet you. When you go, have you realized that nobody comes to meet you? Or you've not realized that? Even when you take state transport and you arrive, there's nobody there. I'm talking about a thousand times so many more. One time I was driving to Lagos. When we entered Benin, we began to be escorted by motorcycles. Church members on motorcycles. <laughs> in, in the country of Benin. Hey! So many times more. Receive it one. Receive it two. Receive it three. Receive it four. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can I tell you something else? I want to tell you about your future. In Psalm 115, verse 14, the Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. I prophesy your children will be in the church. I say your children will be in the church. In the name of Jesus. One pastor was speaking. He said, my daughter went to a disco. And I had to. He had to go to the disco. To sit there with his daughter. A great man of God. Your daughter will not go to any disco in Jesus name. You and your children will become more and more in the church. Receive it one. Very soon you will see the children who we dedicated in the church leading worship and praises. Very soon you will see children that we dedicate. We dedicated them. You will see them standing in this pulpit and preaching. There is somebody here. You are going to see your daughter. Singing and preaching And you'll be surprised And you'll be so happy Receive it in Jesus name Those of you who have daughters It's for you If you have only sons It doesn't apply to you Can I say a blessing to some sisters I say unto my sister, thou art my sister. Be thou the mother of thousands of millions. And let thy seed possess the gate of those which hate you. In the name of Jesus. God is going to bless you more. Can I tell you the last thing? I want to describe your future. One day you are going to say, I have too many fruits. My members are too many. They are always following me. Everywhere I go, they are there. Receive it in Jesus' name. One day you are going to say, my churches are too many for me. What can I do with all these churches? There are too many churches. Too many people. Hey. 
I see the belly. I'm seeing somebody's belly. Not yam and contumere. Not fufu and soup. Not rice and uh, nana stew. But living water shall come out of this belly and shall bless many people. Do you know nana stew? Nana stew. Pig feet stew. <laughs> Pick feet still. One day I did a postmortem on a certain man. When I opened the stomach, it was full of yam and very small stew. The stew was very small. Out of his belly was coming yam, yellow. Yams. How do you say yam in tree? Baire. Is it correct, Baire? Yeah. Baire was flowing like a river. But out of your belly, I said, out of your belly, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, I'm telling you the last thing about your future. The flock that the Lord shall give you. Huh? Are you there? Shall increase more and more. The holy flock. As the flock of Jerusalem. And all the waste cities shall be filled with flocks of men. And they shall know that I am the Lord. Hallelujah. You shall know that the Lord is with you. Because of the flocks of men. That the Lord will give to you. Sit down. Hallelujah. Now. 25 steps. We don't want big churches per se. If the Lord gives us, we we receive it as a miracle church. All we want is micro churches. Amen. Between two to three members and 30. When you get 31, you are no more a micro church. You are moving to a mega church. 31 members, you are in a mega zone. There are three zones. Mega, micro zone, mega zone, and miracle zone. MMM. There's a shop in Switzerland. There's a shop in Switzerland called Negro. And when you go to that shop, there is a sign, M. It's in orange, M. Depending on the things that are in the shop, you see one M. If the shop is bigger and it has more things, you see M, M. And if the shop is bigger with clothes and other things, the same where they sell food and everything, it's even bigger you see M M M. That's how our churches will be. Some of them will be M for micro. And some will be M M for mega. And some will be M M M. Miracle. Miracle. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Step number one. To 10,000 micro churches. A removal of what? Rebels and stones and other unwanted. Number two, pruning. Number three, cleaning. Number four, huh? Closeness to Christ. Is that not so? Is that not so? Number five, Closeness to the leader. And I told you that one, you have to be in class what to understand it. Class what? Two. From class two upwards, understand this reality. Is that not so? Number six. Respect the words of the apostles. Number seven. Stay with the teachings of, of Christ. Amen. 
Step number eight. Glorify the Father with much fruit. Number nine. Keep the commandments and the vision of the Lord. Amen. Whatever the Lord instructs us to do. If he commands us to go to Nigeria, we will. If he commands us to go to Ethiopia, we will. If he commands us to go to Democratic Republic of Congo, he will. If he commands us to go to America, he will. Now, recently, the Lord told me something about building a church in America. And, wait, wait. So, you see, we must follow his direction. Not, we are not following any man. If he says, then we do. If he doesn't say, we don't do, or we do until he says, don't do. You get it? So, you have to respect that thing. You have to respect the voice of God. And God will bless. Amen. Number 10. What? Focus on loving God. Is that what it is? Number 11. Operate in love and loyalty. Number 12. Love one another. Number 13. Do you have number 13? Okay. Always remember the greater love. Greater love has no man than this, that one should lay down his life for his friends. Amen. In the same breath where Jesus said, you know, this is my commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. And he went on and he said, greater love has no man than this, that a man should lay down his life for his friends. Amen. This is the great love. And we must focus on this love. Now, I want to say this, okay? There is no greater revelation than the revelation of salvation. You know, people who come up with all kinds of ideas in the church, I tell you, you cannot get away from the reality of the word of God. Greater love has no man than this. This is one of the evangelistic sermons you can preach. The great love of God. The great love of God. There is no greater love than this love. God commended his love towards us in that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. It's the greatest thing that ever happened. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It's the greatest thing that ever happened to humanity. So I want to say to every pastor here, you must be able to preach from this verse for one hour. So write it down as a vision. And you must be able to preach from John 3.16 as a sermon. God so loved the world. If you don't, if you can't see me, I'll help you with some points. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. One time I went to preach at a convention and I don't know what they had been preaching on but when I finished I preached on John 3.16. Every pastor must be able to preach for one hour on John 3.16. D.L. Moody, D.L. Moody, one of the things that, he was a great American evangelist, one of the things that changed his life was that he was once attending a church where a visiting minister came to visit and to preach. And the visiting preacher preached on the topic John 3.16. And the visiting preacher stayed for several weeks and every day he preached on the topic John 3.16. Yeah. And D.L. Moody was so surprised. He didn't know that God's love was so great. And he didn't know that you could even preach about it and that God was so loving. And you see, it it touched his life and he became one of the greatest evangelists ever that America had. You see, these are the topics. I remember a certain wild man, he, he, he and his wife, his wife got saved first. But his wife got saved because she put on the radio and she heard Billy Graham preaching. 
Billy Graham was preaching from a verse in Romans 5, 8, I believe 6, 7, 8. He says, God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. She was a suicidal drunkard woman. And when she heard, God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Now, I've, I've, I've asked you not to close your eyes in front of me. And I'm telling you, I will ask you, no matter who you are, to get up and walk out. So, this is my, this is even a merciful whatever. Because I just spotted somebody and I was just about to move and I said, let me just give you the light. And do not chew chewing gum in our church. It is not permitted on these grounds. These two things, please. Since December last year, I do not allow anybody to sleep or close his eyes in front of me when I'm preaching. Please, if you are an elderly person, whatever, please follow what I'm saying so that you are not embarrassed. You can get up now and you can go to the back. Okay, I did it in the morning and I'll do it again. And if you want to even leave the church after that, you can, you can go. Okay, it's not a problem. Alright? You will guide me and make me not preach what I have to preach. You will tell me by your closed eyes. It's, it's, you are talking too much. You will tell me by your closed eye. It's enough on this point. You will tell me by your closed eye. There's no anointing in the service. You will tell me by your closed eye that I show is boring. You will tell me by your closed eye that this topic is not a good topic. You will tell me by your closed eye that this is not an important topic. And you will guide me and mislead me in the spirit. So I do not allow or want it. Okay, Harun, are you there? Yeah, stand by with Pastor Oko to remove any elements from my, vi- my vision. Ever ready? Okay. This is the last you are going to hear of that. Stand up so that they can see how big you are. And then you also stand up. Oh, your body here. Wow, your body wow. Your body wow. Okay. These are the spiritual police of the front row. Okay, sit down. Now, are you there? Okay, good, good. Where was I? Before I was mis- I was distracted by something evil. The woman got saved by this message. God commanded. I want to ask you, are you a pastor? David, stand up. You stand. Are you a pastor? You stand up. Can you preach about this message? God commanded his love towards us in the while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. It's a topic. If you cannot preach on it, I question your calling. You should be able to take that verse God commended his love towards us in the while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. You must be able to preach it and preach for 45 minutes, one hour on that topic that God commended his love towards us in the while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. Thank you. Pastor Brian, stand up. You, you, you call yourself a, a man of God. Can you preach from this verse? Greater love has no man than this, that a man should lay down his life for his friend. You have, can you preach from it? For one hour, you have to have points. And, be, and even like the guy who touched D.L. Moody's life, be able to preach on greater love has no man than this for six weeks continuously. Greater love has no man than this. If you call yourself a man of God, I am giving you the opportunity to prepare your sermons and get to the job. You stand. You say you are a woman pastor. Can you preach on John chapter 3 verse 16? God so love the world that he gave his only son that whoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life for six weeks on just that you see i'm talking about the great love of god you may be seated but this is your last warning you must be able to preach on this topic (laughs) amen am i saying something good yeah i'm taking i'm talking to people who call themselves men of god Men of God, this is the greatest thing that ever happened. John 3 16, there are so many ways you might be able to titrate it. God, the greatest person ever, loved the whole world, not just a few people, like how somebody loved just his children, or loved just your son, or loved, loved your friends. He loved everybody. He loved, he loved Ghanaians, Togolese. Beninois, Nigerians love Airways, he loves Ashantis and many of us are not like that we love our tribe, we love our brothers we love our friends we love uh, this and that and so on and so forth we don't have great love but God loved the whole world that he gave 
Love gives. Love gives. Love doesn't take. Love doesn't remove. Love doesn't destroy. Love gives. Gives. Are you getting some of the points? Yes. What do you give? That shows your love. What people, when you give, you show your love. Don't just talk with them. I love you. You give. That's why people buy gifts. And he gave his son. The greatest possible gift a person could ever give. That whosoever. This is the greatest, widest invitation. Whosoever. Not just a few. All those from Wesley Girls. All those from old Achimotans. All those from Infancipim. All those from Ghana. All those from... No, no, no. Whosoever. Believe it. The easiest thing you can ever do. It's not difficult. No, whosoever passes the exam. Whosoever had three A's. Whosoever has five A's. Whosoever is clever. Whosoever, whosoever believe it. Should not perish. 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 We can stay on the word perish for five weeks. Perish means hell. Perish means lake of fire. We should be able to preach on lake of fire and hell. You have to have different messages on hell. On perish. Why you should not go to hell. What happens to you when you die? What it means to go to hell. What it means to perish in the lake of fire. You should be able to preach for weeks and weeks. But have everlasting life. Everlasting life. You should be able to preach on everlasting life. Everlasting life. Heaven and so on and so forth. Are you with me? So those of you who call yourself pastors. I'm giving you. Focus on the great love of God. If you call yourself a minister Take the sermon All these are sermons You should be able to preach What shall it profit a man If he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul You should take only that one and preach for one hour What shall it profit a man If he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul These are the words of Christ with power Yeah Okay Good good Yeah And when I'm at crusades You see when I, when I became an evangelist I was challenged. When I heard that lady, she, she was a drunkard. Her husband was a terrible. He, he, he died and went to hell and came back. That's how I was reading about that story. But the wife, she got saved. She put on the radio and Billy Graham was preaching on that verse. God commended his love towards us in that when we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That was his sermon. The topic was God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. <laughs> That was the topic. Yeah. Okay? Good, good. All right. So focus on the great love. It brings growth. The love of God brings growth. Amen. How many points do you have? 13. We are halfway now. 14. Understand the vision and know what the master is doing. Amen. What is he doing? John chapter 15 verse 15 All these points are found in John chapter 15 You don't even have to come to church I'm just preaching out of John 15 It says no longer do I call you slaves For the slave does not know what his master is doing Or the American standard says Yeah does not know what his master is doing But I have called you friends For all things that I have heard I have made known to you Amen so you must understand the vision. That's why I said, I'm not calling you slaves. Amen. I'm calling you friends. Because slaves don't know what the master is doing. But friends know what the master is. Or even they understand what is happening. Are you there? Now, when you read Isaiah chapter 11, the Bible talks about the Spirit of the Lord. Number one, it says the Spirit of the Lord, the seven spirits of God. You can write it down if you, if you are interested. Spirit of the Lord is one. Spirit of wisdom. Spirit of understanding. Number two, spirit of counsel. Spirit of wisdom, number two, spirit of understanding. Spirit of counsel. The next one is the spirit of might. 
and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Amen. Have I got all of them? A spirit of knowledge. Amen. All these are different. But now Christians must begin to have understanding, not just knowledge. Because you can know that you are supposed to do something. But then you can understand why you are doing it. That's the difference between a doctor and a nurse. The difference between a doctor and a nurse is the understanding. Do you understand? The difference between a doctor and a nurse is that because many nurses know what the doctors do. Do you understand? And and even there are some nurses who can do operations. They have great under they have great experience and they know the procedures, but they don't understand it to the extent that the doctor does. So they know they have the spirit of knowledge. But they don't have the spirit of understanding in some areas. Because if you take chloroquine, many of us take chloroquine. But when I, and many of us know malaria, it causes what? Fever and headache and so on. But I, when I did parasitology and I studied malaria, I studied the 10 complications of malaria. And prepared myself to write long essays on the ten complications of the malaria injected by uh, falci- falciparum. What is it called? Plasmodium falciparum. Yes, the type of complications and the things that can come to you out of malaria. You don't have any idea. And so you may know. Treat it with this, or oh, this is this. But the extent of understanding what is happening to them, like when I see people who have not lived in tropical environment, and they come here and a mosquito bites them, immediately my mind waves through several wild things. Whereas a nurse or a lay person may just know, though he can get malaria, but I know. I remember one time one of our pastors came to Ghana. He stayed. He had not been to Ghana for so many years. And he came. I tell you, when he went back to Europe, he was in intensive, he, he went into intensive care, heart support, cardiopulmonary resuscitation support on malaria. I'm telling you, he was, he was, he was, he was put in intensive care and brought to life and kept alive. On, but, but you will not know because I don't understand it. So, what I'm trying to say is that many things we do, but we don't understand why we are doing. So, if we are doing 10,000 micro church, you know, yes, we know 10,000, but try and understand it. Try and understand why. And God is saying that when you want to have 10,000 us to be stronger and bigger, there must be more understanding of the things. Not just know. Yes, we know stage number one is independent spirit. Stage number two is what? Offense. Stage number three is passivity. Stage number four is this. Stage number five is this. Stage number six of disloyalty. But now you must have an understanding deeper. You understand it better. You know that nobody is trying to control somebody. If you know me well, and you know even the things that we do in terms of employing People, give me just a bit one more light, please. And you know, a bit of thing in, in terms of employing people, you will know that one of the things that I do when I employ people is to employ them in such a way that they can live. <laughs> you know that there are some jobs you cannot easily leave because when you are leaving, it's difficult to live in a certain way. But I want it to be easy for you. I will pay you a lot of money to live. I'll pay you far more to live than to stay. If you like opt to live, you will earn what you would have earned for years. And you'll go with blessing. 
Because you see, you shouldn't have somebody who doesn't want to be with you. Who is afraid of you. Who is afraid of something staying with you. It's not a good thing. If you understand it, you will not like to control people. I don't want to control anybody. If you have understanding what loyalty is, you will know that it's way beyond what you think it is. And that is why God wants us to not just know it. But he says, and now I'm not calling you slaves. Because you, a slave doesn't know what's happening. But I'm calling you friends. Friends, they, they understand what's going on. They know, they know he's doing this. After that, he'll do that. And after that, he'll do that. That's why all those seven spirits, says knowledge is one. Understanding is another. Counsel is how you speak. What you say. Because some people have understanding. They don't speak well. They don't speak well. When you say, I remember one time I was talking to someone and as the person talked, I decided, wow, this person, I was, I changed my mind. about when he spoke such powerful words, I, I just said, no, I've decided to do this for this person. Then as he continued to speak, he said something else and I said, no, this guy is not correct. And I changed my mind again within one speech that the guy made. So you, you sort of have to know how to speak. Some, many people don't know how to speak. Many people don't know how not to ask for things. There are some things when you ask for, you shouldn't have asked, even though you need it. You shouldn't have asked for it. The spirit of counsel would have told you, just speak in this way. So, you, 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 and then wisdom tells you how to use the knowledge now that you know that for instance if I know that there is a snake under this lady's chair if I say snake now it may disturb so I have to know how to use the information when I may come and I say sister can you come I just, just stand over here gently and then you also come and then I'll say Randy come I want to show something uh, bring your stick uh-huh. then okay you're holding it come then and uh, you just understand something. Uh, just stand there and then look at that. Can you believe it? Look at what is there. Pick it up. And then I take it up. But if I was a snake, huh? there can easily be a stampede here and somebody will die. And they will, the news tomorrow says, Some, uh, um, Bishop Daki Watmill kills three people in his, son, in his Thursday evening service one time there were some girls in a secondary school they were in, a, in the evening they were having a prep so they were all in the classroom then one of the girls said ah, ah. suddenly everybody got ah. they all got up stampede because they thought the girl was ah. and they just there was nothing she said ah and then Stampede. So, how will you use that information that you have? Yeah. You may know that this person is an orangu, but how will you get rid of him? That's where wisdom comes in. You have knowledge, then you have understanding that such a person should not stay for long. But now, how will you remove him? How do you get rid of people? How do you get rid of people? One time I heard Fred Price saying that you pray them out. That's one method. And then other times you transfer them. Transfer reveals a lot. Anybody whose heart is not correct, transfer disturbs the person very much. Transfer brings out so many things. Oh yeah. Since the church began, I've always used transfer to reveal hearts. Oh yeah. One day, I had two pastors. They were being some way. So I called. In the night, I went home and the Lord told me, tomorrow, sound the trumpet clearly that all may know the sound of the trumpet. Immediately I knew that it means that say something clearly because the guy was been operating for some time. So I called the two of them. One after the other. And I said, brother, I've decided to transfer you. I mentioned a certain town in Ghana. I said, I've decided to transfer you there. And the brother said, transfer. Okay. 
Then it was like he was quite disappointed. Then he said, but anyway, no problem. I'll go. I'll go. We'll see. I'll go. So I said, all right. Next. And I called the other guy. And when the other guy came, I said, I've decided to transfer you to such and such. He said, transfer? To where? To here. And I said, oh, so you have worked there before. He said, oh yeah, I've worked at that place before when I used to be in the world. And so on and so on. So it's not a problem for me. I can go. But anyway, there's something that I wanted to tell you. I said, what is it? I've decided to resign. Yeah. I've decided to try, I've decided to resign. I said, You've decided to resign because the Lord had told me that I blow the trumpet so that we see which way it is. So when he came out and said he had decided to resign, very good. So, very good. So I said, Tuesday, come and we will introduce you to say bye bye. So the brother who I transferred earlier, I called him back immediately. I said, Come back. I said, I've changed my mind. What I was looking for, I've seen it already. You can be here. Yeah. So that thing brings out things. Amen. Are you there? Are you understanding what I'm saying? So you must not just know things, but you must try to start understanding why things are happening. Yeah. A lot of people, they know loyalty steps, they signs. If you don't write notes, it's a sign. Try to understand why. Because there are some people who will not write notes, but they are not some way. They may not write notes, but they are not some, and there are some people who may not clap when you preach, but they are not some way. We were born on, when was I born? Is it Wednesday? Tuesday? Tuesday. Are you sure? Okay. But not last Tuesday. Tuesday, but not last, just last Tuesday. Do you think we are children? As soon as somebody is not holding a pen, it means that the person is an evil man. Come on, you must grow up. You must grow up. You must, you must give us some more credit that we have a little more understanding in our heads. Give us some, give us some credit. Give us some credit. When I say people should not sleep in front here, try to understand why. And I gave you the explanation. Your eyes are closed like that. It sends a signal to me. That I, 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 sh- I should stop or it, it, it's over. People are very tired and people want to go home. And you are belaboring a point which you should have concluded some time ago. You are making me feel that I'm not anointed this evening. You are making me feel that, that there's, there's no power in the message. That's why the people are falling asleep. You are giving me all kinds of signals which disturb me and distract me from what I'm doing. So there is, if you must understand, it's not that I am rude or I just want to frighten people or say things or embarrass people. No. Since last year, December, oh, 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 I, I, I went to a church. I tell you, I went to a church. The whole road, they, they just slept. But you must give me, you must give me some under, you must give me some credit. Not everybody who sleeps is some way. I know that. I know that. Some people are just old. I went to a church. The pastor introduced me. He and his wife they were sitting right there. And when I started preaching, they just adjusted themselves on the chair. And then they slept. The husband and the wife together. I mean, they thought that they were together. And be- oh, honey. Honeymoon. Now, when I finished preaching, the pastor came up and said, wow. Then he gave some of the points that I had preached. So I realized that in his sleep, he was getting some of the message. Then, in addition to that, he invited me on the stage to come back the following year. He said, how how many things that he must come back? I must come back. 
I was invited there and then. And for the next three or four years, I was invited. And every single time I went, he sat there with his wife and they slept each time. So, you see, but when I look at the age, the person was 60 and going. And you see, as you get older, you are like, baby, you need more sleep. And as you are getting towards eternity, the final sleep, you'll be practicing. As it gets, you get closer, you'll be practicing uh, how to sleep. So, what I decided to do, I'm just trying to say that you have to have understanding of what is going. It's not everybody who is sleeping who is some way. So, what I did was that I decided to preach from in front of them. So, I, I started to stand here so that it does not affect me. So, I was preaching like that to the left and to the right. And I, and, I, and I avoided looking at them. And I also didn't say anything bad about them. Because, or that, because sometimes when I'm preaching, I, I may say that if you sleep when I'm preaching, you are not called. These are some of the things I've said before. Or if I, you are sleeping when I'm preaching, you are not, and usually people who are not called sleep when, when you are preaching. But it's not everybody. Some are tired, some are uh, old, some are rehearsing, different things. Some are on medication Some are pregnant And some work in the mortuary Yes It's also something that I found I remember we had one pastor He was always working in the mortuary And he used to, used to sleep During teachings So one day I was looking at this guy I said ah, Why is it that he starts sleeping when, And I realized that, see, When you work in the mortuary The formalin The scent of the formalin in that it, it is inhaling, they are inhaling it all the time. So it's like a drug. So as he comes, but he has a good heart. That's a good heart, but he's feeling sleepy. Do you understand? So what I'm trying to say is that huh? he's trying to imitate the dead bodies. <laughs> uh, evil communication corrupts good morals. He has been fellowshipping with the dead and it has affected his life. You know when I preach about loyalty I can preach about stage one The independent spirit I can preach about that one alone For one hour, for two hours I can give you examples about snakes And how snakes are independent Anaconda Is a snake, the biggest snake in the world It can be as big as a pig The size As long as nine meters From here to somewhere here and the, the size of a pig The round, the girth And they give birth It lays eggs inside the body Because there's a lot of space inside So it lays eggs inside And hatches baby anacondas I'm telling you something about an independent spirit And then when it, is, it wants to deliver It goes to a quiet part of the river It delivers in the water and it comes into the water and then it brings out the babies. And you see that. And there was some, when I watched the anaconda giving birth, the man said something I've never forgotten. He said that the snake is independent from the first second when it comes out. It has nothing to do with its mother. Eee! It's like I have no relation with the one who gave birth to me. From day one, I mean, not even day one, second one, one minute. When it comes out, I'm my own man. I, 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 I appointed myself. I came from nowhere. No one helped me in this world. I am on my own and you are also on your own. That's a snake. Every other animal would depend on its mother and its father for months and months and months and months. But this snake... From day one, I, am, I, I depend on no one. I need no one. I belong nowhere. I'm not part of anything. I came and I'm on my own. No breast milk. Forget it. What are you talking about breast milk? 
ask your neighbor, do you have an anaconda independent spirit? Tell your neighbor, understanding, you need more understanding. Amen. Number 15, operate as friends. Operate as friends. You must have deeper relationship. In John chapter 15, Jesus said, I no longer call you slaves, but I call you friends. Amen. I call you friends. Wow. Are you there? We must develop deep friendships. That is what brings micro church growth. And everybody can have up to 70 friends that you know personally. Usually from 70 and above, it's not easy to remember the names. But everyone can remember at least 70 names. So the 30 is not a problem. You can remember at least 30 people, 70 people. Amen. Friendships. Relating. Talking. Amen. Deeper friendships. Like a family, we must relate. We must relate like a family. And we must get deeper and deeper into each other's lives until there is nothing else to hide. Amen. Rick Joyner, in his book, The Call, he said, In heaven, everyone knows everyone else completely. You, everyone knows everyone completely. There is nothing hidden. Many of us are suffering. We have problems. But you don't know that the problem you have is the problem that your neighbor has. Because we are not friends. So one of the ways to develop closeness. Jesus said, you are my friends. And I can say that the people that I work with, I know that I am senior to them. I know that I am above them in terms of rank. Oko, Oko, come. See this gentleman here in the blue shirt. Yeah. Escort him. No, no, no. This one here. Yes. Uh, uh. Okay. He was looking downwards, he was writing. Okay. <laughs> Look, keep your eyes on your neighbor. If you notice anything, just lift your hand like this. Loyalty does not withhold information. Do not withhold information about the person who is sitting by you. Don't withhold information. And loyalty is to the higher authority. Loyalty will cost you friendships. (laughs) The third row here, one, two, three. I'm watching you closely, all those on the third row. I'm just informing you. Oko, keep your eyes on the third row. (laughs) Many of us don't have deep friendships. The people that I work with, at least I see them as my friends. I see them as, not I'm the the boss. I'm the boss. Hey, come. They're my friends. Who else, who, who else can I talk to? They're my friends. Amen. So, develop friendships. Who is your friend? I don't have any friend. You don't have any friend because you are not friendly. You, 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 you look strict. Some of you, your face looks t- 
tense. Your face looks tense. And then another thing is that some of us, your fa- you, you, you are not open. You only, you only laugh about general things. You laugh about Obama. You laugh about McCain. You laugh about MPP. But the real part of your life, we don't talk about. When I sit with Bishop Saki, one of my topics, I, I talk about his Juanita. Because it, must, it, it is the real topic of his, of his life. A year ago, she was here. It, it is a real, the real topic of feeling as we are sitting. Is that so? We, so we should talk about Obama. We should talk about uh, Akufuado and Mills. And they talk about the real one that is the person has a feeling about. It, it comes to me naturally to talk about the real issue and not just scaling over around things, and then we don't say it. We are just there (laughs) Good evening The weather is very nice this evening And we are being blessed in this conference We give glory be to God Please, what is your name? My name is John I want to be your friend We don't know how to go deep. Let me tell you something. Everybody's trouble is the topic that he wants to talk about. If you want to be close to somebody, talk about the thing that is pinching that person. Anybody who finds someone who can relate with your pinching problem, when you find that person, you like the person. You, you like the person because the thing that is worrying you, the person likes to talk about that thing that is worrying you. And he's talking. When I see young people, one of their main problems is beloved doses. Is it true or it is not true? When I see when, when I see when I see a young a young brother, I get close to people by talking to them about marriage. Straight away I start to because that is what they are thinking about. They are dreaming, 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 they are imagining, they are thinking. They are, shoosh, shoosh. Is it true or it is not true? Yeah. When I see people who are married, I immediately talk about marriage. I'll ask you. Is it? It's not only you. You may think that. Oh, but why? Why is he asking me that uh, question like that? Uh, is it in front of people too? And I did not uh, appreciate uh, such an experience. And that is what I ask everybody. Eh, the way he was talking to me, I said, I don't treat my husband. I said, oh, I don't treat my husband nice. I don't, I don't appreciate such things at all. I think you better talk to the bishop to stop embarrassing us in public, right? Look. When I see you, and I, yesterday I saw a, a wife, her husband had traveled, and I come as, as soon as I saw her, I said, did you treat your husband nicely? First question, did you treat your husband nicely? She said, yes, I did. Because people don't get good treatment. Did you treat him nicely? Sometimes, if I just see him, I say, are you being nice? It's one of my, I'm not trying to embarrass him. Are you being nice to him? Are you being nice to her? And they say, oh, yes. Everybody says yes, by the way. The answer is always yes. And then, I ask, what nice things are you doing for him? 
I was sitting there. He was asking me that, that question that he likes to ask too much. What nice thing am I doing to him? Indeed, I've made Ghana soup for him. What else should I do for him? I've made Ghana soup for him. No. I want to know what else, apart from the granite soup, what else are you doing that is nice? Sometimes I see people are asking, do you smile when he comes? Because a lot of people don't smile. They smile. Look, let me tell you. Watch people. When they finish smiling with you and they turn and they are going, do like this and watch their face. You see that? The smile that, okay, make sure they say that. The smile is finished, oh. The smile was for you. As soon as they turned around, the smile was gone. Ha! It finished instantaneously. It was a special smile for your presence. Watch couples as they walk away. I see whether they are talking. You will see that, Charlie. I'm a talkie. Hey! So you see, if you want to be close... Talk about the what? The pinching problem. Tell somebody the pinching problem. Yeah. You meet a businessman. You get it. You talk about business. The real thing, God, the businessman, his mind is only on his business. His mind is only on his That's why we are not close and we are not friends. Because we don't talk about the pinching problem. When I asked the sister a question, she said, it's personal. It's personal. That's what she said. It's personal. I said, don't be silly. What do you mean by it's personal? When the baby is coming out of that place, is it personal? 15 people are standing there as you are pushing the thing out. What is personal about that problem? private it's intensely private there's nothing private amen so tell your friend we must be friends now the person who is sitting by us by the way what is your name is it, we, 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 I don't even know. by the way by the way what is your name you see me at church we don't talk hmm? no smile was it this morning I told you that I read it in a book? Something that is more important than the clothes you are wearing is what? A smile on your face. Amen. Number 16. Okay, 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 good, good. And that, I think this is the last one. Magnify your calling. Or we, we must magnify our calling. We must talk about it. Amen. Now notice, Jesus said in John 15, verse 16, He said, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you would go and bear fruit that your fruit would remain so that whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Amen. We must continue to speak about the fact that it's not something that we are just imagining, but God is giving us 10,000 micro churches. God is giving us, it's, it, it's a calling. It's a calling by the church, on the church, to have a lot of small churches. Amen. Amen. And as you wave your calling and magnify your calling, you get more strength for whatever God has called you to do. In Rick Joyner's book on the torch and the sword, when he was under great attack, he had to lift up his torch and wave it. That was his calling. And then the sword, and he kept rotating the sword and waving the torch and as he was waving the torch it became brighter 
and he began to have victory and overcome. You see, waving the torch, which represents his calling and his mission, you know, magnifying it and speaking it and saying it and persisting with it and just getting into it, get plugged into your calling, get connected to the call that God has for you. You see, the more when I when I when I get into what I'm called, I'm comfortable. I was talking to a prophet, Kakra, and he was telling me he's written a new book. It's coming out soon. And that book is about supernatural things. And he says something, he said, I'm comfortable in the spirit world. You see, because it depends on your calling. Depending on your calling, you are comfortable with what it is. You see, I'm comfortable with 10,000 micro churches. Such things. Immediately I'm at home. So when the Spirit told me to encourage the church towards 10,000 micro I became at ease because I knew what I know what I'm comfortable with. The more you go into your calling, not your weakness. Because there are some things that I'm not good at doing. One of the things I'm not good at doing is being mystical. I'm not good at being mystical. I have a lot of mysterious things and sometimes even visions. A lot of things I do, they are supernatural. and like that, But you will never know that it's supernatural. You, 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 you will easily take it for... Well, even if having a meeting, I'll be sitting there, I've lifted my leg and I'm, I'm telling you that you are going to die soon. And I'll, I'll be sitting with you, laughing with you and I'll put my hand on, on you and just tell you about your death, which is coming soon. You wouldn't, because, you see, that is how, is I'm, not, I'm not good at being mystical. I say, I see something! I see something! No, I'm, I'm not good at that. That's not my style. I feel it. One day, Prophet Kakra told me that he was preaching and he saw a motia. Do you know a motia? A motia is a dwarf. That as short as the chair, a man that is from the ground up to the chair that you are sitting on, he's short like that. And as the guy is moving, the motia is also moving. Hey! But you see, I've also seen a kind of motia before. But you see, you may not get me to call it. I saw something. Following you last week. Now, even last week, God told me about somebody who's going to die. Oh, yeah, not even last week, this week. But you see, there are inexpressible words that cannot be, that are not permitted. There are some things, it's not permitted. I mean, my, my, perhaps that, not my problem I have to be cured of is talking too much. Because there are some things you are not supposed to say. You are just supposed to see and be there. It's friendship. Friendship with God. So look at some things. Eh, hey. Don't say anything. It's just between you and I. What is your gift? What is your calling? The more you Jesus is emphasizing, you, you are not choosing yourself. I've, I've actually chosen you. You are actually called by me. Yeah. Some of you are helps ministers. You are not preachers. You are not preachers. You must help people who are preachers. Give God glory for your gift. Some of you are anointed as prophets and seers. You know, one of the things I'm happy about is in the church over the years, people have changed their roles. I remember Olivia. The Lord told me, the Lord, the Lord told me 
to employ her. She was she used she helped me when I first started writing books. Even the book loyalty, I did that book with her. Yeah. Then the Lord said to me, Employ her. Back let bring her back to the ministry. Yeah. You know, it's very important to follow the spirit. The Lord said to me, is it, but you see, I don't do it mystically, but the Lord told me to do it. Today, when we have healing Jesus crusades, she has, and the Lord told me, take her back. I didn't even know, I just said, just come and pray. But now, she has developed into a kind of prophetess that ministers, she ministers in the morning, I minister in the evening. At the crusades, she ministered 10,000, 20,000 people. When I'm not there, they put her on. This last crusade, we were supposed to start on Tuesday, we started on Wednesday. Tuesday, there were 10, 000, more than 10,000 people sitting there. They didn't bring it, they, they gathered themselves. They showed the video and then they called her to come and speak. Yeah. In the mornings, the whole 10, 10 20,000 people, she's there. She ministered, she does miracles, people are healed. Witches, the last crusade, she had over 300 people giving up witchcraft at the altar call. Holy Spirit baptism, she ministers. It's powerful. And you see, the person has moved out of book writing to something else. And I'm happy that in the church we have this. But you see, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is that I may not do it in a mystical way. I might just say, come. But some people are good at mystical feeling. Ah! Oshes! Bring that one to me. Quickly. No, no, not that one. That one. No, no, not that one. That one. Follow my hand. Follow my hand. Follow my hand. Uh, my gift is to be just as if I'm not anointed. And as if I'm just talking. Yeah, as if I'm just talking. But there's power in it. Well, there's a lot of power in it. <laughs> but as if I'm just as I'm just talking. One day somebody put on the television and he, and he saw me and then they, they took the remote and they just turned and you know what they said in their, in their room? The girl came and told me, said, is this preaching? It's not preaching. She's just talking. Stories. It's the stories. Uh, we can understand it. That was one of the complaints that they can understand what I'm saying. How can we understand what, what you are saying? How can we understand it? It's not, it's not mystical. When I, when I flow in my calling. Yeah. One day I went somewhere to preach. They told me. When I was going there, somebody called me and told me, that place, be very careful. They told me, the guys sent me a message. And they said that when you preach, we shall ask the congregation to take an offering for you. Then a, a brother who has been to that place to preach before called me and told me, I'm going to that place. Last time I went there and I preached and they took, after they took an offering, the offering was very small. And they came and the pastor sat down with me and they met me and they told me that, they told me your preaching was not good. The people were not blessed. That's why the offering is so small. If you had preached better, they would have given more. We want to tell you, you have to know that you didn't do well. Oh. So as I was going there, my heart was beating. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. So when I got there, what should I preach about? I preach about what I'm comfortable with. I preach about John 3.16. I'm comfortable with John 3.16. And John 3.17. And so on. I preach what I'm comfortable with. About working for God. It was Wendell Smith who told me, said his call, he told somebody, his calling is to challenge people to work for God. That is why when he speaks, he challenges people to work for God. That's his calling, to challenge people to work for God. I just lifted up my torch and my sword and waved it. 
and I preached on that. And after they took the offering for me. So I was trembling. I was waiting. What is going to be the verdict? It was like elections. What is going to be the verdict? Will the offering be good or will it be bad? Are they going to come and rebuke me after? Because I've been to places where I finished preaching. They sat me down and they dressed me down. Totally. I mean, I feared. And they have never invited me to that place again. So when they came, finally, the pastors, they came to sit down with me. And they said, hmm. Since our church began, we have never received such an offering before. For my John 3, 16. The highest we have ever received since the church, since the church began. You see, I could have taken a topic on Aaron's beard. Huh? Or I could have taken a topic on uh, what? Prosperity and abundance, seed sowing, and I should leave those things to Mike Medock. I leave those things to Mike Medock. I'd rather go into my calling. So, Lighthouse. That's what I'm saying. That if you want to prosper, uh, that's the calling in the household. When you go that way, you will do well. Anybody who has, I have sent, and the person believe and well, the person is always surprised. An example is Doris here, sitting here. I sent her. She was not happy when I sent her. I said, go and be a pastor. She was one of the nice sheep. After preaching, she would say nice things. Bishop, we're really blessed. Really enjoy the message. And now when I said, go and start a church, she was not happy. Most people are not happy when I send them. But today, come and see the church that she has. She's now a, an overseer of different churches. She has sheep and supporters, French and English. It's heavy. That is the strength. And, and that's why Jesus said, you didn't send yourself. I sent you. You didn't send yourself. Always remember, you are not sending yourself. You will be surprised when you follow the thing and you know that I did not send myself, but I have been sent. That's when you do well. So may you be strong. And that's why Jesus said, you didn't choose me. I chose you. What you are doing is not your own mind. I am sending you. So go. It's not your own mind to have 10,000 churches. God is the one telling us go and have 10,000 micro churches. It's not an idea of a human being. It's from the Holy Spirit. Do it. You'll be blessed in it. You'll prosper in it. That will make you prosper. You'll be surprised. You will do well in it. That is a very powerful step. Remember his calling. I always remember his calling on my life. Go, preach. And all that I have is my little beliefs. No visions and all those things. Just go. God will bless you. And you will become great in his kingdom. In Jesus' name. Amen. Stand to your feet. Now, all of you pastors, study the way I have kept people awake so that you can use it in the future. Because since I move in the spirit against the spirit of slumber, it has vanished from here. Yeah. So it is a powerful thing. Now, there is a cloud over your head right now, I see. Lift your hand into the cloud and receive the calling. Receive the gift. Receive whatever God has for your future and your destiny. It is not money. It is more than money. It is your calling. It is your gift. You have not chosen me. I have chosen you. You have not sent yourself. You have not ordained yourself. I'm the one. Remember that and walk in that. 
and you shall prosper and you shall flourish. Shande Basanda Kamandala Medese Mandala Laba. Oh Ramasanti Tolo Mugeres Perilindos Limbe Krigemele. In the name of He who raised Jesus from the dead. Parazande me kibora manande, prezondo la bambele dibolo bliketes plegirimora, mandes petilo lade. O shande sembo sentola mandabile pereluson teligre, cremborestro recire tromzigel menjuzi, panzemditisico tomblidese, perambu teminge tamal medule paraladeste. Padilen domenin semdutikes. Shem disbani mantese kotole tes embrigeste. Oh yes, Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for the calling. We thank you for the gifting. We shall always remember that calling, and we shall stay in that calling. We shall remember that we did not send ourselves, but you have sent us. You have sent us to have understanding, to work as friends, to build your church. To do your will. We thank you for our future is determined in the spirit. We give you praise and we give you honor in Jesus. Now just thank God for 10,000 and more than 10,000. Ah, I hear the spirit. More than 10,000 micro churches all over the place. Father, thank you. Thank you for centurion pastors who are released into the environment. Thank you for anointed people who are overseen oh, hundreds and hundreds of churches. Thank you for your blessing now in Jesus' name. Mendu climando simbolon trum jegina bengistel mender de shembele besemendekelede. We give you praise. Thank God right now for your gift. There are people here with a gift of helping, with a gift of prophecy, with a gift of pastoring, with a gift of, of evangelism. Just receive that gift right now. Father, thank you for the gift that has been multiplied right now unto your servant. The young ones, 75, 78 young people are receiving a gift of God right now. Receive it and walk in it from today. You have not chosen yourself, but God has chosen you to serve him. Father, we thank you and we praise you for the gift of helping, the gift of prophesying, the gift of pastoring, the gift of evangelism, the gift of apostleship, of starting things and beginning things, the gift of multiplication, Lord, the anointing, the grace. We, we give you thanks and we give you praise in the name of Jesus. Amen. As every head is bowed, you are not a born again Christian. Standing in here. No one should move at this time. And you want to give your life to God. You want to say, Pastor, pray with me. Help me. I want to know God. I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. Wherever you are standing. Whoever you are. You want to say, Pastor, I want to give my life to God. Somebody invited me to church, but I know I'm not a Christian. I know if I die tomorrow, if I die today, I don't know whether I go to heaven or to hell. Please pray with me. Pray for me. I want to know Jesus as my Savior. Today I see the blood of Jesus washing away your sins. Making you a new person. Wherever you are standing. If you are here tonight, you want to say, Pastor, help me to know God. Help me to know Jesus. I don't want to go to hell. I want to give my life to God today. If you are here like that, wherever you are standing, just stand there. But if you want to give your life to God, you want to be a new person from tonight, lift up your right hand. Just lift up your right hand up high. God bless you. Just the right hand. Lift it up high. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I see all your hands at the back. I see your hand upstairs. Just lift it up high. Pastor, help me to know God today. I want to know Jesus. I want my sins to be washed away. Lift it up high. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you everywhere. God bless you. Now, if you have lifted up your hand, I want you to come to me from upstairs, from the back. Come. Come to me in front here. Come down from wherever you are standing. Come to me in the front here. I want to pray with you right now. There is still room for more. Just walk to the front. Just yes, walk from the side. From upstairs. From the back. For you. There is room at the cross for you.
coming, we are waiting for you from upstairs, from wherever you are coming. Everybody lift your hand and say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for all my sins. Tonight, I give my heart, I give my life to Jesus Christ. Oh God, I am a sinner. Oh Jesus, have mercy on me. Cleanse my heart of all my sins. Just wash away my sins with your precious blood. Thank you, Jesus. From tonight, I give my soul, I give my heart, I give my everything to Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Please write my name in the book of life. From tonight, I belong to Jesus. Say after me from tonight I am born again From tonight I belong to Jesus And I will serve Jesus Now say after me Satan Listen carefully From today I will not follow you again I will not serve you again I belong to Jesus and I will serve Jesus. Say thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I am yours. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I will serve you, Jesus. Change my life, Jesus. Change my life, Jesus. I give you my life, Jesus. I belong to you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me today. In Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. From today, this is your church. I want you to go to these pastors. This is some pastors are waving their hand here. I want you to go, but please, tomorrow night, come again. And on Sunday, come. Don't let the devil keep you. You are being, this prayer is you were just being saved. God was changing your life. He was saving you. Amen. Amen. It's a powerful thing that is happening to you tonight. Your life is being changed forever. Amen. So I want you to go with our pastors who are waving their hand this way and then you come back and join us just now. I give them a mighty clap. Tonight is our special offering night. Is that not so? How many have got your envelope ready? Take it out and lift it up and let's pray about it. Father, thank you for these special offerings that your children are presenting. 100 Ghana cities, 50 Ghana cities, 20 Ghana cities, 10 Ghana cities, whatever. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you have your special offering, bring it to the front. Can I five pastors right in front here? Just walk to the front quickly and put it and go back to your seat. That is the special offering that you are bringing for tonight. If you have your end code, yesterday you pledged I was going to give 100 CDs, 20 CDs, 50 CDs. I think we need 10 CDs even. 10 CDs. Huh?
if you forgot to bring your special offering, whenever we have a convention, we have special expenses. So we need you to always come with something special to just help. Instead of charging gate fee at the gate or something like that, just give a special offering and it will help to build your church and to build the work of God. Amen. What do you think? Is it a good idea? Is it a powerful thing? Is it exciting? Amen, 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 amen. Maybe we're not here yesterday. How many were not here yesterday? We're not here yesterday, yes. We want to give a special offering. You can bring yours tomorrow, amen. But tomorrow night is foreign currency night. Tomorrow night is foreign currency night. At homecoming, we want you to everybody to find some foreign currency. Amen. Amen. Are you excited about that one too? Dollars. Tomorrow we are going to receive a special offering in foreign any currency apart from cities. Dollars, pounds, euros, sefa, naira, any currency. And it's going to give you an international dimension to your life. Because most many of you are localized in one country. That God wants to give you an international feeling. Receive it. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Please bring your special offering. If you didn't bring it, if you didn't get it, or you didn't bring it, you can bring it tomorrow. Tomorrow is the last day I believe. Alright. There is a ladies uh, grill. Ladies grill on Sunday. High ball, sorry, on Sunday or Saturday. All ladies are coming. It's open. You have to pay. You have to pay. Not much though. All is subsidized. These offerings are paid for a lot of things. Amen. Now, have you brought your envelopes? Okay. Now, take out an offering for tonight. Many of you didn't bring anything to the front. Stop pretending. <laughs> take it out. And let's give special. Take it out. 20 seeds, 10 seeds, 50 seeds, 100 seeds. I want to make a very special altar call in just about a minute. So it's offensive to me when people walk out. You know? Father, anybody who walks out now, I, there is a handbag. Somebody is carrying a handbag. And something is going to happen to that handbag. See, my difficulty is to be mystical, but all these things I've seen them. You'll be surprised what will happen to your handbag. You don't go out if you want to keep your handbag. It's not that I'm sending handbags to you, but I'm telling you something about your handbag. So it's better that you just stay in the church and finish the service. Amen. Lift up a look. Show your offering to your neighbor. I said, look, neighbor, it's time to be open. We are now friends. This is what I'm giving. This is what I'm giving. Lift it up. Father, upstairs. Hey. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing as we give tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I shall receive your offering. Now listen. Tomorrow night is what night? Currency. How many would like to have an international aspect of your life? I see some people doing shopping abroad. Shopping. Receive it in the name of Jesus. You have been doing your shopping mostly at Makola or KJT Market. But God wants you to do some shopping in Paris. How many would like to do some shopping in Paris or Minneapolis? Receive it one, receive it two, receive it three, receive it four. Now, tomorrow night, get an envelope. I'm not going to give you an envelope because it's causing financial loss to the state. Find your own envelope. All those of you who are based in Ghana, most of us have got some foreign currency. Is it not true? When our brothers come to your house, they will ask, where is the foreign currency? 
So if not Amrod, it is offering. So so a seed so that no Amrod will ever ask you that question. In the name of Jesus. Give generously in US dollars and expect a harvest in dollars. But so that I am so it, he shall reap it. So in pounds and expect pounds. So in euros and expect euros. So in naira and expect naira. So in any currency, apart from that, is a special thing tomorrow night. Believe God. If you don't believe it, don't do it. You are wasting your. And let me tell you, the church does not need your twenty dollars or your hundred dollars. Do not do anything in the church. This church is bigger than your twenty dollars. It is for you. This one is an offering for your benefit. All these offerings are not for your benefit. You are, you are blessing the church. But this one is a seed. There are also seeds. But this is a seed. I'm taking it for you to be blessed. Some of you will be supposed to you. There are some people here who will be in India in the future. In India. In fact, more than 100 people will be surprised. Some of you are going to find yourself in different countries working for them. So find some. If you don't have foreign currency, ask your neighbor right now, the person who is sitting there, please, do you have any foreign currency? I can have some foreign currency for tomorrow night. Tell the person, I know you are from homecoming, you must have uh, some foreign currencies. All right. Now, how many are going to bring your foreign currency of free tomorrow? And the more you sow, the more you bring. Apart from what I told you, you place an end, you took an envelope yesterday. I cannot give you any more envelopes today. Bring your own envelope. You will take a foreign currency offering specially. Pounds, dollars. And I know God, you are going to sow thousands of dollars. Now, some time ago, it was very special. Because in those days, our currency was very weak. But now, due to President Kufo's good uh, leadership, our city is next to So we are not so impressed with $20 to this city. You get what I'm saying? $20 to this city. So when you say $20, we are not afraid. We are, we are using dollars in Ghana. Tell you, we are using dollars in Ghana already before you came. But it's just symbolic of your internationalization. The internationalization of your ministry. You do see all these flags. God has given an international ministry. It's amazing. So now when you see the Cape Verde, Cape Verde, Brazil, Venezuela, Cameroon, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, Poland. Hey. All oh, these are places. It's now easy to have a real ministry in all these places. So tomorrow night, we will come. Now, before we end, I have a very special announcement. The Holy Spirit has prompted me to give you that special announcement. Amen. Amen. There are some people, as I've been preaching, who sense that you have a call of God and you want to be in the ministry and I want to invite you to take the opportunity to go to Anakazo Seminary Bible School Anakazo you know the 45 people who graduated they say 4 years ago I, I did a similar altar call and they came and they graduated and they all become pastors they are now pastors and I'm so proud of those guys and I know in 4 years time some of them will be driving the cars here, from the towns that they have come up with pictures. Come up with pictures. So, Bishop, I want you to see the church. This is our church in Tumu. This is our church in Wali, in Wali, Wali, in Sisala. This is our church. This is our building. And I say, I'm so proud. I can go to heaven now, but so happy to see such things. Amen. Amen. But there are some people here. You also sense God wants to use you. God wants to prepare you. And you want to also be trained to come. And I want to invite you and give you a 
scholarship to come to Bible school for four years. It's not six months. It's not, it's not even one year. Four years. We train you. We will help to build you up. And one day you will be released after suffering. We are inviting you to suffer. To suffer for four years. To see fire. Ginger bread. But after you come out like shining gold. Hallelujah. So if you are here and you believe God wants you to do that, lift up your hand. And lift up your hand. I mean, I know that some people here like that are giving a special altar call. And, and come, come to the front. I want to just pray with you right now. You are special special man.
How many people are there in the school already? Over 600 full time. Every day they meet, they eat, they drink. They are taught 600, 600 and something. This is what I'm going to have in the last Our aim is to have 1,500. This one it disturbs the dead. <laughs> That's why I say that. Satan is soon going to be asking his police who is the devil when he sees our methods of killing him in a loose. Amen. Amen. So immediately after, I don't be afraid of him, even though he's very.